St. Patrick's Day 2024 is coming up, and I've got to brew a beer for it. Every single year, I either brew an Irish Red or an Irish Stout, alternating years. And this year, it's the turn for the Irish Stout. But I've already brewed a lot of Irish Stouts, and in fact, I've already had one go on to the National Homebrew Competition and win a bronze medal there. So I feel like I've kind of figured that style out. It's time for me to try something different. So today, we're brewing an Irish Extra Stout. What that is, is just a bigger, stronger, roastier Irish Stout. So that should be a lot of fun. And to boot, we're gonna toss this one on the beer engine for some fun. So let's get into it. Everyone's very familiar with Guinness and Irish Stout in the classic sense of it, but Irish Extra Stout is one that you don't see all that often. Irish Extra Stout is the export version of an Irish Stout. The export basically just means that it's a slightly stronger version of the basic beer. While Irish Stout normally caps out around 5% ABV, the Irish Extra Stout can actually go up all the way to about 6.5% um, and have a respectable 50 IBUs of bitterness to it. So there's a lot you can do with this, this kind of beer that almost makes it very similar to uh, an American stout in many ways. I think that the higher level of alcohol content can handle a little bit more intense roastiness. So we're gonna kind of try and play with that variable a little bit today and we'll see how it works. Before we jump into the recipe, I do want to thank a couple organizations for helping make the video possible. Firstly, Northern Brewer, who provided the ingredients for this batch of beer, and secondly, Claw Hammer Supply, who make the system that I've been brewing on for the last several years now, and I'll be brewing with this video. That's the 10-gallon, 240-volt system. Also, a big thank you uh, to Emmett at Clawhammer for helping upgrade the system with a pickup tube now and a nice 90 degree elbow on the lid recirculation. So that should help make the brew day a lot nicer. So we're gonna start out with eight pounds of Maris Otter as a base malt. It's a nice biscuity, bready base malt that works really, really well in stouts and honestly in both English, Irish, and Scottish beers, it works really, really well as a base malt. Adding to that a classic Irish stout ingredient, two pounds of flaked barley. Flaked barley is gonna help promote the body of the beer. It's going to help give it a nice thickness without this slickness of oats or the tartness of wheat. Flaked barley is kind of like a stealthy way to get a nice fatter body to the beer uh, without giving it any additional kind of characteristics beyond your standard barley malt. We're gonna add to this now eight ounces of Crystal Light. Crystal Light uh, is an English crystal malt with about a 40 lava bond color that gives it a nice residual sweetness, but not too much. You don't want this to be a sweet stout. This is still an Irish dry stout, emphasis on dry, um, but with a little bit higher ABV level. So that crystal malt is in there really just to kind of round out some of that roasted malt character um, and to make the beer slightly more drinkable. And then we gotta talk about our roasted malts here. So typically with Irish stout, you're gonna just throw in a big percentage of roasted barley for your roasted malt. Sometimes some chocolate malt, I like to do that for my standard Irish stout. For the Irish extra stout today, I'm getting a bit creative and we're gonna throw in three types of roasted malt. This is something I would normally do for a much bigger stout uh, to give complexity in the roastiness. The first is your classic roasted barley. So three quarters of a pound of Thomas Fawcett roasted barley, then we're gonna add eight ounces of Simpsons chocolate malt. Where I'm going beyond the average Irish stout, though, is the eight ounces of Simpsons black malt that I'm adding. Black malt or black patent is uh, a really, really powerful, very, very dark roasted malt. You do risk kind of getting a little bit more intense, more sharp of a roasted character out of it, um, which is actually kind of what I want. I like the roasted character a lot, especially in an Irish stout. Um, and this one is going to be no joke. Next up is hops. Uh, typically with Irish stouts, you're gonna have a little bit of a hop character in uh, there and a decent amount of bitterness. For the extra stout with the extra level of alcohol, we want a little bit extra hop character as well to help balance things out. So we're gonna bitter with Challenger for about 30 IBUs. I'm gonna be adding two ounces of Challenger at 60 minutes. Then at 10 minutes, we're gonna add one ounce of East Kent Coldings uh, for a little bit of nice flavor and aroma. And then lastly, at zero minutes, one more ounce of East Kent Goldings. For the water profile on this beer, it's a nice heavy minerally profile, but what we're doing here especially is emphasizing the chloride to sulfate ratio. Um, this beer will be roasty and that roasted character will emphasize the dryness, which will get us that checkbox with a dry stout, but we do want the maltiness to come through and be satisfying as well. So that's why I'm playing with the chloride to sulfate ratio the way I am. That water profile is going to be 104 parts per million of calcium, seven parts per million of magnesium, 53 parts per million of sodium, 131 parts per million of chloride, 
100 parts per million of sulfate and 133 parts per million of bicarbonate. In order to get that water profile, I'm starting out with eight gallons of reverse osmosis water and adding to that five grams of baking soda, eight grams of calcium chloride, two grams of Epsom, and four grams of gypsum. The yeast choice for this beer is a classic Irish ale strain and one of my all-time favorites for any Irish beer and any stout in general too, and that is Imperial A10 Darkness. This yeast has a fantastic ester profile, it complements the beer very well, but it also doesn't attenuate too far, but attenuates enough to make this beer uh, nice and balanced at the very end of it, and has a good mouthfeel as well. Lastly, for the mash in this beer, I'm doing another overnight mash. As a brand new dad, time is a premium, and I don't necessarily have six to seven hours to go ahead and actually do a full all-grain brew day from start to finish. So splitting that up in the middle with a nice overnight mash uh, should get the job done well. Worst case scenario, this does drop the final gravity a little bit uh, relative to what it should be, but it's a dry stout, so it works pretty well in this style. So we'll be mashing this one overnight at 152 degrees for about 12 hours, basically. So I'll mash in 10, 11 o'clock at night, I'll come back 10, 11 o'clock in the morning and finish up the brew day from there. Should be really fun beer to make. Um, I'm really looking forward to having a good Irish stout on the beer engine this year, so it should be a lot of fun. I started out by adding eight gallons of reverse osmosis water into my Clawhammer Supply 10 gallon to a 40 volt system. As it was heating up to the mash temperature, I also milled out my grain and measured my water salts and added my water salts into the water as it heated up. Once I reached the target mash temperature of 152 Fahrenheit, I mashed in with the entire grain bill, stirred it up thoroughly, broke up any clumps, and let it recirculate for about 10 minutes before pulling a pH measurement to confirm the mash pH, which I found to be pleasantly on target at about 5.2. At this point, because I was doing an overnight mash, I stopped the recirculation, but still left the temperature set to 152. I covered the kettle and walked away for the night. I came back the next day, about 12 hours later, to continue the brewing process. At this point, all the conversion that could take place did take place, so there was no point in really holding a mash out, so I just accelerated it all the way up to a boil and pulled out the grain basket to let that drain as that was taking place. I let the grain basket drain for about 15 minutes before removing it, and then we reached that boil shortly after. Once I started the boil at the 60 minute mark, I added my two ounces of Challenger for a bittering addition and left the boil to continue for another 50 minutes before adding in one ounce of East Kent Goldings at 10. At 10 minutes, I also added my Whirlflock tablet and yeast nutrient. Lastly, 10 minutes later, I ended the boil and added my one ounce of East Kent Goldings at zero. I performed a quick whirlpool to coagulate all the hops and trube together and chilled down to my pitching temperature of 65 degrees. My water is very, very cold this time of year, so the chill did not take long at all. I could easily chill en route to the fermenter, so that was a nice, easy thing to do. I recorded an on-target original gravity of about 1057, and then I immediately pitched my yeast into about a 65 degree wort and left it to ferment. For the fermentation of this beer, um, I really recommend sticking with the Irish ale yeast if you have access to it. It is a nice, relatively clean fermentation with a little nice berry note on the end of it that's very complementary to the roasty flavors. If you can't find the Irish yeast though, the best substitute is actually Scottish yeast. Scottish yeast is going to be cleaner than Irish yeast and English yeast. Um, it's relatively ester free. It attenuates about the same and still gives you that nice residual mouthfeel. Um, but it's missing that ester, so I think relative to the actual style, the Irish Ale East is still the preference there. If you can't find Scottish yeast that works though, then the last ditch is either Nottingham or Fuller's strain, because uh, those are gonna be relatively clean English strains. English yeasts are typically going to produce a little bit more esters than Irish yeast, and not all of them are complementary to the roastiness. When you're fermenting this beer, Keeping in mind that higher gravity that this one has relative to other St. Patty's Day beers, I would really recommend keeping the fermentation at 65 degrees and no higher. Um, because you want to limit that ester activity, because you want to keep that fruitiness under control, uh, it's really, really very important. 
Another good way to kind of keep the ester activity under control if you have the ability to do this is actually to pressure ferment the beer. Pressure fermentation will help you get a cleaner character out of the beer while fermenting at a slightly higher temperature. So if temperature control is a problem for you, then pressure fermentation can be a nice band-aid kind of solution. It wouldn't be my go-to thing for this style of beer though because uh, despite what I'm saying, there is a slight amount of ester character that I want in the beer, but to a very limited degree. Uh, and pressure fermentation can hinder that in many cases. And lastly, Kvike is always a good option for the beer, um, especially something clean like Voss or Lutra. I would, I would go towards those options if you absolutely have to, um, but please, for the sake of authenticity and for the sake of the beer turning out like an actual Irish stout, please just try to go with Irish yeast if you can. Trust me, it's worth it. All in all though, because this beer is slightly higher in OG and because this slightly higher roasty character in this one, it's probably gonna take a bit longer to condition uh, and to be really drinkable. Even after the fermentation is finished and the beer is packaged, maybe two weeks from now, it's probably still gonna taste pretty harsh uh, and maybe a little bit acrid. I'm not sure how the overnight mash will have impacted the level of uh, astringency from the roasted malts. That'll be interesting um, and I'll let you know. But basically, I think this beer is gonna need some conditioning time because of that extra black malt addition and because it is a bit stronger. I think somewhere between two weeks post packaging and one month this beer will really be fully drinkable. It's really a matter of sampling the beer at least once a week to see how it's progressing and then getting it carbonated and put on tap right at that right moment when that roasted character is starting to kind of fade off a little bit and become much more round. And if you're like me and you want to put this on a beer engine because it's awesome uh, in that style and it's gonna get you that nitro effect, basically, that everyone raves about at Irish Stouts, then listen up, because here's how you do that. If you wanna know how to make a beer engine setup work at home, please check out the video, it's gonna pop up in the corner. I've done a whole video breaking down this process. Um, but basically, what we'll be doing is naturally carbonating the beer in the keg, as if it was a cask. So basically, I'll take a small amount of priming sugar, I will add that into the keg at packaging, along with some finings, so that priming sugar will ferment in the keg and uh, get the keg carbonated naturally as if it was a bottle. At that point, once it's all ready to go, just hook up the beer engine hand pump and you are ready to go and ready to serve. This should give you the nitro effect. In fact, the nitro effect was really made to mimic the effect of pulling a pint of Guinness off of a hand pump. Of course, if you're like 90% of people watching this video and that's not an option for you, then you know certainly the nitro setup is a great thing for this beer. And even if you don't have the nitro setup, also like 90% of homebrewers probably, it's perfectly fine to serve this one on a regular CO2 faucet just keep that carbonation level a bit lower. If you want to, you can actually set up a stout faucet on like an inner tap system with a CO2 carbonated beer and it still works. It will be very foamy, but it will still work and you still get a nice cascade and a good mouthfeel out of it as well. I have done that in the past and it's worked out pretty well. Anyway guys, I'm really pumped to get this beer going um, and I'm very excited for St. Patty's Day this year. So I'll catch you guys in a few weeks when it's all ready. And until then, cheers. Fermentation for the beer went surprisingly fast, actually. After about a week of fermentation, I saw a final gravity of about 1018, although at the time I didn't really believe that that was going to be the final gravity. So I let it sit for another week or so before confirming once again that the final gravity still remained 1018. At this point, I kegged the beer, although instead of force carbonating, I actually added some priming sugar, about two and a half ounces or 70 grams of priming sugar to the entire five gallon keg in order to carbonate it to a volume of about 1.8 volumes of CO2. I let it condition at room temperature for another two weeks to get that carbonation set up and to clear out any off flavors. Once it was fully carbonated, I dropped the temperature down to about 55 degrees for cask service and I put it on my beer engine. The beer is called Face Down on Lansdowne. If you're from Boston, you know what I'm talking about. And it comes in at 5.1% ABV and 35 IBUs.
pouring this off of the hand pump results in a tremendous visual show. I love watching the bubbles rushing through the beer and just watching that cascade is something I could do all day long. Being able to do that at home is really a tremendous treat and uh, really makes having this on a hand pump totally worth it. The color of the beer is a rich dark brown and once those bubbles really settle out it starts to look more black. The head on the beer is a little bit darker than your standard dry Irish stout head. The construction of the head is really pretty amazing too. It's extremely tight and rich and it looks very much like almost milk foam. It's really, really pretty amazing and it also sticks around forever. So I could pour this beer and walk away from it for like an hour and there would still be a little layer of head on it, which is pretty awesome. So I'm happy with that. All right, so here we are. The bubbles have settled out nicely. The beer's still got a nice head on it. So let's go in for aroma. So the aroma on this beer is real chocolatey, actually. Like, there's a fair amount of roast in there, but it's really chocolatey overall. There's not like the coffee character, um, or like a burnt character. There's a little bit of a berry, a little bit of a fruit, you know, kind of thing going on. Um, but yeah, really very, very chocolatey overall. Now let's go in for mouthfeel. For the mouthfeel on this beer, guys, you cannot beat a hand pump in terms of what it does to a beer's mouthfeel. I will say this every single time I put a beer on a hand pump, and I will continue to say it into the future. When you pour a beer off of that hand pump, it is creamy, it is soft, it is full, and it is just an absolute pleasure to drink. There's no carbonation bite to this. It is just velvety smooth. Um, and. That just does wonders for a stout like this, especially. This is very, very, very close to a nitro pour uh, in the effect that it has. The reason for this is because when you're pouring off of a hand pump, air is 78% nitrogen. That's getting mixed into the beer just like you would have a nitro pour. So it's 78% of a nitro pour. That mouthfeel is absolutely soft and luscious and just all of those nice, complex malt characteristics really come to the forefront in this beer. I could not be happier about the way the mouth feels affected by the hand pump, and that will never change. Every chance I get to put a beer on a hand pump that makes sense to go on the hand pump, I'm gonna do it. But the real reason why we made this beer is its flavor, so let's go ahead and jump into that. Mmm. Now this is cool. This is a really, really fun beer. Not only does it really have that heart and soul of a dry Irish stout behind it and the flavors and the feeling therein, but also it's an extra stout. It's got a little bit extra roast. The final gravity did not drop as far as I thought it would, so it doesn't have the extra alcohol, but it certainly has extra complexity in the roasted malt department. So that black malt contribution, which is not your standard ingredient in Irish stouts, is doing two things to this beer. Firstly, it is changing the color of the head from a typical like kind of tan white to a much more darker brown color. Uh, secondly, it is adding a really cool complexity to the roasted malt. Uh, so let's dive into that specifically. Normally with an Irish stout, you're getting a nice amount of like a kind of subtle dark chocolate and some coffee notes in there for the roast uh, with a little bit of a roasted tinge on the outside of that. The black malt in here is giving a nice aftertaste that is a little bit more of that real kind of intense roast. You're getting more of a campfire roast at the very end um, and it's not too much, which I'm actually really happy about. Despite doing an overnight mash with this beer, that certainly gave me a lot of pause because I held the mash for about 12 hours with the roasted malts in there. You would expect it to be astringent, but it is not. It's a very clean roast and it's not an excessive roast and it is not astringent at all. I'm really, really happy with that. There is a moderate bitterness up front. It is a balanced bitterness. Um, and overall, I think it works pretty well, but I could use a little bit more personally uh, to balance out some of that uh, higher than anticipated final gravity sweetness there. The heart of this beer still feels like a dry Irish stout. It's not like a sweet stout. It's not an oatmeal stout at all, um, but it has a little bit more of that kind of chocolatey sweetness than I might have otherwise expected. There's a nice kind of layering of the East Kent Goldings in there, giving a little bit of an earthy edge uh, to the flavor as well. And then you kind of have a little bit of a berry ester there from the yeast as well. Not really picking up too much else from the yeast, and that's kind of the way I wanted it to be. Um, Irish yeast does throw a little bit of that berry ester, as I said before. That's a very important part of the style, and I think it makes a big difference. 
But the complexity in this beer is in that roast flavor and it is awesome. Like I got that dark chocolate character. I've got a sweet chocolate character as well. There is a campfire roast at the very end. There is a coffee note in the middle of this and then a little tiny bit of something else. It's like a je ne sais quoi dark malt flavor that I'm really struggling to actually identify. Um, but it's so multi-layered and complex that this is like it's really enjoyable just to break down the roasty character side of this beer entirely um and i would drink it for days just as a result of that i think a lot of those malt flavors are really coming to the forefront too because of that hand pump and because of the way that that air mixes in and then brings out some more of that malty subtleties um it, it's just really fun to drink all in all though, minus the lack of ABV increase, this is every bit an extra stout that I wanted it to be. That extra roast, that little bit of extra flavor hop in there um, is just really, really nice. It adds a nice dimension of increased complexity to the overall beer. There is one thing wrong with it though. There's a very small amount of a sour bite on this and it's getting a little bit worse week to week. Now, while I do drain the lines of my beer engine overnight, the first pint that I pour the next day off of it is a little bit more sour than the others, which really does lead me to believe that there's something inside the beer engine that just is not getting cleaned out um, that is causing these beers to become a little bit more sour than I would like. The beer straight off of the keg tastes okay. There is a little bit of acrid sourness coming from the uh, roasted malts, but that's it. So when it comes out of the beer engine, it's a lot more sour, which leads me to believe there's something in the beer engine that I can't get rid of despite going through it several times with PBW, with sanitizer, with line cleaner, with whatever I can get my hands on to clean this stupid thing and just doesn't seem to kill whatever's in there. So that's gonna be a fun project um, to take care of that. But otherwise, everything else about this beer, I'm very happy about. The funny thing is, Guinness actually has a little bit of a sour tinge to it naturally. Um, and I don't know if Guinness Extra does as well, but that is a quintessential part of the Guinness flavor, and it's something that people really work hard to replicate when they're making their homebrew clones of Guinness, uh, either in addition of an acid malt or a sour mash or something to get the pH down to where it's a little bit more sour. So I'm kind of rolling with it, to be honest with you. Either way, I'm really happy with the beer. It really is a cool take on an Irish stout, something different uh, than your typical kind of Guinness clone for this time of year, and um, I'm loving it. It's fantastic off of the beer engine, and uh, you know, I'm just really happy that I have the ability to do something like that. For potential improvements on the beer, really all I have is I would like the balance to be a little bit more favoring the, the hops, um, I think, and then trying to lower that final gravity a bit. So that can be one of two things. You can either add more bittering hops, maybe like five to 10 IBUs more of bittering hops, or you could try to reduce that final gravity more by choosing a different yeast strain that's capable of fermenting more of those complex sugars. You could reduce the mash temperature and increase the amount of flaked barley in the beer to keep that balance of the body in there, um, but also lower that final gravity a little bit. If you want to make this beer differently, I would recommend trying it out that way. Otherwise though, the grist on this one made me real happy. I'm not changing a thing about the grist. I definitely want to include that late hop addition as well. That's coming through real nice. Despite that little sour tinge on there, I really am quite happy with the beer. It's everything I wanted for this St. Patrick's Day, and I think you'd be really happy if you try brewing it yourself. If you enjoyed the video and you learned something, please go ahead, hit that like button, and also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below with your thoughts on the whole process, your thoughts on the beer engine, your thoughts on the brew, your thoughts on St. Patrick's Day beers. Let me know what you're brewing. If you want to support the channel, please consider picking up a t-shirt like this one. You can find this one and many other designs in my merchandise store, which is linked in the description box. So check that out for some more details. I also have a Patreon, and the Patreon supporters are really honestly the reason why I can do things like get a beer engine, build it, set it up, and use it for these beers. Um, so your support is really, really, really appreciated, and it means a lot to me. So that's where all that stuff is coming from. If Patreon's not your thing, I also have a channel membership, and there's the super thanks button. Both of those things help me out quite a bit as well. I also have an Amazon store where you can find not only the channel production equipment, but also my home brewing equipment within reason that's on Amazon. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer, so check that out for some more interesting social media, some more frequent posts. You'll see what's coming to the channel in the very near future, so don't forget to follow me there. And last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you very much for watching not only thus far, but also to the end of the video in general. It means a lot to me because I put a lot of work into these videos and they take a lot more time to produce now that I've got a little child to take care of, um, which is wonderful, but certainly eats into my time available for these things. 
Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and uh, that's what's really important to me. So this one goes out to you guys who are still here, and I will catch you in the next one. So until then, sláinte, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Cask beers are supremely chuggable, by the way. <laughs>